Hello! Summer hiatus is over and I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be reviewing two books at once because uh, I think they share sort of similar themes. They're both about like the disconnect of living in the day and age they're set. Um, so I'm going to talk about both of them. And these books are The Informers by Brett Easton Ellis and Taipei by Tao Lin. I'm going to start by talking about them individually though. The Informers from 1994. I actually didn't know that this was a selection of short stories before I started it. Um, which is a little bit weird, but I think this is the fourth Ellis book I've read and I've sort of gotten used to how to read them to get the, the best effect and that's to not get attached to any of the characters at all. So it didn't really matter too much that I couldn't really connect chapter to chapter very easily. So I just let the characters go and just went with it. So there are 13 stories in total in this and they are all from completely different perspectives, different ages, different genders, different walks of life, uh, but they all sort of connect to each other. Um, you know, all the mutual acquaintances and stuff like that and all have different topics but most of them are to do with people and people communicating with each other and thinking about each other and it really, it really is classic Brace and Ellis. it does just describe a sort of grungy LA background where nobody has any morals and people just have to fend for themselves Of course I liked some chapters more than others but there was one that was just incredible the eighth chapter called Letters to LA, it was only like 25 pages long but I think probably my favourite chapter I've ever read from a book ever. It was great. It's the only chapter that took an epistolary form so it was just in letters, had about a dozen letters in it um, and it told the story of a young woman going to LA for, for a semester and writing back to a guy that she was infatuated with at Canada College and just describing what's going on in her life and you can just see the degradation of her mind and her morals and everything that she was throughout this chapter and it just epitomised for me everything that Brett T. Snell's is writing about you know about and just his like disgust for the culture of Los Angeles just comes out so well in that chapter and it's really beautifully written and everything. So I really like this book overall uh, but I know a lot of people don't like Brett T. Snell's style of writing it's very short and unnatural uh, but I, I think it really came out well in this. Now on to Taipei by Tao Lin. This is about a 20 something writer in New York and it follows him over the course of about two years as he goes on book tours and goes and visits his family in LA, in LA, in Taipei. Taipei. But mostly it's about him making and losing friends and romance while taking an increasingly large amount of drugs and caring less and less about anything. But in the end of the book he has a sort of light bulb moment where he realises what it's worth to have a proper symbiotic relationship with another person which kind of solves the rest of the book. I love the way this was written, I think it was gorgeous, it developed such a descriptive mood for the book and some of the metaphors are just stunning. He would still be and be inside the invulnerable dot of himself, irreducible and unique as a prime number, on or off, there or not, always following itself perfectly. There was a specific girl he liked who liked him back, but he couldn't remember who it seemed. When he realised he'd been thinking of Anton and that he'd unconsciously degendered and abstracted Anton into a kind of silhouette, which he'd successfully presented to himself as a romantic prospect, he grinned uncontrollably for around 30 seconds. <laughs> On the front cover of this book there is a quote by Brett Easton Ellis which reads, With Taipei, Tao Lin becomes the most interesting prose stylist of his generation, which I would agree with. Uh, but actually the rest of the quote that they cut off was, But that doesn't mean this book isn't boring which I would also agree with. There are sections which just seem aimless about just going to parties and taking drugs and it's just so indulgent. And while I expected a bit more plot from the book, I did like it overall. So yay, two books. I think they're both intensely reflective of the authors and their state of living because they both show what the authors find interesting about modern society and disgusting. And they both have a backdrop of just really sad, disingenuous, uninteresting blah and then the storylines are both about kind of the people that do make the connections and make it interesting and have to deal with all of this blah um, but they're the most intense point and I think it's strange because in other books and in the world I don't think well this is my my state of living I don't see the society I live in as that contemptuous at, at all but I think both the authors play that side heavily so that the sort of shallow connections that they've made in in the plot um, are much stronger in contrast to the background. 
One huge difference is that Brady's nurse never accomplishes anything. Um, I think I think it's often a, a statement about society rather than you know a solution. There's no progress with these people. If anything, it's even more of a down spiral. Um, but while Taipei is a consistent down spiral, um, at the end it does kind of give you hope, and not only for the characters in it, but for society as a whole that's heading that way. It's kind of like they had a family gathering and Freddie's nurse is the uncle that just couldn't see any good in the world, and, and Talon's the grandson that while being incredibly cynical, uh, still has this, this hopefulness of youth. So that's my review and discussion about the informers and Taipei. If you've got any thoughts, please leave them below. I will see you soon.